Before we start our calibration routine, what we're going to do is uh, check the batteries. The EM31 runs off of uh, 1.5 volt C batteries. Uh, it's worth spending the money and getting a, a good uh, battery, Duracell, Energizer, Energizer Max are acceptable. What I do is I like to keep them in sets. So um, here I have a September 19th uh, set A. So the EM31 takes eight, eight uh, C cell batteries. So I just go ahead and I uh, put the date in use. Of course, I could put in the year here too, but I will just throw them away after the, the, the next year. And then I have a set of Duracells just for no other reason that they were also available. And a uh, nice little habit just to take a Sharpie pen that doesn't wear off and, and uh, keep the set together. So what we want to do uh, again before we start any other further work because this um, equipment works off batteries we're just going to check the batteries because you don't want to get out to location and have uh, dead batteries. So uh, these batteries aren't new. Uh, when they come new, they will just be slightly overcharged. Uh, as per package, they're 1.5 volts each. So 1.5 times 8, that's uh, 12 volts. So you can see it's um, uh, a 12 volt system. We'll go into that uh, later. Um, so uh, I just have my positive lead, my negative lead. I want to put my, my multimeter on uh, a reasonable scale. Uh, it's reading uh, voltage. And if I put the uh, red terminal on the uh, on the on the, uh, the positive, and then the negative on on the uh, negative, you can see we're reading 1.5 um, volts uh, DC. Again, for whatever reason, if you have the polarities reversed when you're doing your battery check, uh, you, if you look at the uh, the battery uh, display, it'll read the same thing except it'll be negative. Um, Either or is fine, that's just an artifact of us checking the batteries. So um, yeah, I think we're, we're good to go. With a 12 volt system, anything that starts to uh, drop around 11.2 volts overall, you have to be wary. So if these batteries were to test, say about 1.4 volts, I would uh, think about changing them out. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna check each one. Speed this up for you in the video. Run them in sets. Uh, do not mix and match them. All you'll do is wear out your batteries faster. Excellent. Okay, so we're good to go. We'll turn off our multimeter. And we'll proceed with the next step. Okay, there's the view of the EM31 Mark II in the uh, the travel case. All I've done here is just remove the uh, the top lid on the cover or on the transportation case, so we can get access to the device. Currently, it's upside down, so I'm going to uh, take it out and uh, insert the batteries, and then we can start our testing. There's a transmitter, it's red, it says transmitter, a transmitter and a receiver, let's keep them separate for now, we're going to put batteries into the unit. Okay, there's the blue and it says receiver. So they'll only go in one way, the blue dot to the blue dot, it's on the other side, the back side, and the red dot to the red dot. cover back. It's important to cut the, put this cover back that way when you're out in the field you can set it down and you don't get dirt with the electronics. 
see his four feet here. So I'm going to set it down. Flip it around. And there is the control panel. So now we have to get access to here to put in the batteries. There is a retaining clip here. It has to get unscrewed. Then access to the battery compartment. So let's go put in the batteries. Okay, so we're gonna set down this pad because we don't want to damage electronics that are on here or the backboard, the circuit board. Okay, so red is positive. So we have to make sure that we orientate get these batteries in properly. Very delicate wires, so be very careful. So, We'll just check it through the device itself. Again, positive to positive. Oh, make sure our scale is on zero to 20. So that way we're checking the wires from the contacts of the circuit board, everything is intact. Okay, if you troubleshoot this now, you don't have to do it in the field in case you're having power problems. Again, the polarity was reversed. So. Go ahead and make a change that. Everything looks good. We'll continue on. We won't do this for the second set of batteries. There'd be no reason to, because again, we're just checking the contacts from the circuit board to the, uh, the battery holder. Okay. So that's where I unscrewed the port. And there was the handle, and then there's the circuit board in the back. Okay. So there is the cannon plug that feeds to the inside of the EM31. You want to make sure that you're electrically grounded before you work on this but everything here is rubber or plastic okay let's go ahead and put it back in and then we'll start our calibration procedure Archer EM31, waterproof PC, little stylus on the back, access data access ports on the bottom for uh, various USB serial ports and uh, power. The unit has already been charged. Turn it on. It's already in the EM31 page. If I just go home, I could see the uh, Rick Jacobs, the date. Um, just a regular PC. Right? Okay. If I go uh, in to look at all the different options that I have available to me, um, again, I could just touch it and there's EM31. Okay, so we have monitor, survey setup, logger setup, GPS. We don't have any GPS on this unit. Display options, 
close that. And of course, exit. So we'll do monitor. Okay. And it says, please wait. Fix the problem. No connection or instrument off because there is no instrumentation hooked up. So we will hook up the instrumentation and then we will be able to uh, continue. Fix the problem. No, to exit the mode. Okay, so we'll have to hook it up to the device and uh, continue on. So we have a phase, the battery, now the battery is off, mode, fine control, course control, and also the RS-232 coming out. Okay, we're going to go through the EM-31 Mark II setup. The Mark II has the external archer on the top. Well, there are two versions of the Mark II. We have several of them at Nate. This is the, uh, the one that we're using right now has the external display. You can get another Mark II with just the internal display. It uses electromagnetic inductive techniques that facilitates, facilitates conductivity measurements without needing to be in contact with the ground. Real-time readout through the RS-232 output port maps any subsurface anomaly that can cause a change in the conductivity of the ground effective in areas of high resist surface resistivity gravel or sand page two what is our coil spacing discuss this in the theory the frequency this is single frequency device approximately 10 kilohertz the range resolution and accuracy Storage and records, there's lots of memory available. Depth of exploration, six meters. That's if it's on the ground in normal orientation. Repairing conductivity and in phase. Measurements in parts per thousand. Okay, so these are the two readings that we're gonna get real time. In phase, ratio of the secondary magnetic field to the primary magnetic field used for metal detection. So again, the phase screw, range, mode, fine compensation. That's where you will use the screwdriver to make adjustments. Course is a knob, and of course the communications port. So we're gonna run through the operations. We're gonna check the batteries once we have it hooked up. Put the operating mode to operation set range to battery and you can see that there's two sides it's a 12 volt system four batteries on each side so that makes just an excess of six volts each if absolute values are less than 4.4 then the batteries must be changed so 4.4 that means if our batteries got down to 1.1 volts but we would never go down that low that's too low 8C batteries uh, disposable, so you don't want to use rechargeables. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Check the zero readings, insert the transmitter tube, align the red dots to the guide pin, and engage the clamps. Be very careful. Do not drop the tube. Hold the instrument around a meter off the ground. Set the mode to operation. Set the range to a thousand. If the conductivity is outside plus or minus one, we have to make an adjustment. 
battery operation check the battery voltage should be on the bottom Transmitter. Transmitter. Okay, hooking up the blue, which is the receiver. Exactly the same way as the transmitter. We'll make sure the power is off. Okay, that's careful. Hold on, we're going quite easy. Operation, set the in phase measurement. It will be very hard to see. Right now it says I equals negative 0 0.2. In fact, all I did is off screen, I was uh, adjusting the course knob. See if I turn it. I know you may not be able to see, but it says I equals 5. I've got to turn one click counterclockwise to the left. It goes to a negative value, negative 0 0.1, because I've already adjusted it. If I go again, negative uh, 6. So I'm going to take it back to the uh, around the 0 value. Back out this nut. So that's the course and then the fine. Back up the nut, and then with the screwdriver, I can uh, make my fine needle adjustments because I want my in phase value to be around zero. Okay, right now it's around zero. I am shooting with a metal micro microphone stand, uh, uh, a metal stand, so it's picking that up as well. So perhaps we'll be able to see this. Check the phase, put the mode switch to phase, rotate course compensation control one step clockwise. If the value stays the same, the phase is correct. If not, you have procedures to do another adjustment. And once you're done, you want to make sure the set screw is back to its original position. So the phase switch goes, uh, the mode switch goes to phase. Now you may not be able to see, but it says 20.48. I'm looking for no change. When I take the course compensation, one step clockwise. 
and I've done that and it says 20.47. So the value has to be within plus or minus 0.2. So we'll call that good. Put it back to the way it was. Make sure I lock down this nut. Okay, now I'm checking the sensitivity. Put the mode switch to comp. Rotate the course compensation control one step clockwise. The value should change to 22 to 26 millisieverts per meter. And uh, this basically checks the sensitivity of the instrument. And it's the last quality control check. We have to make sure to put the switch back after the compensation, uh, the course switch back after we are done. So right now it is reading. Um, we have start. We have to go into um, uh, compensation mode. Yeah, it's reading uh, three. So what we are going to do is rotate one step clockwise. And the value now is reading around 26. Well, 24, 24, 25. So again, minus three, the original setting, we're within the 22 to 23 millisiemens per, uh, per meter. So we're good to go. Okay, so we want to make sure that we put our switch back. Make sure it turns the right way. Okay, it's back to reading near zero, again, because I have a metal stand here. Once we're out in the field, it'll be fine. Then we can go ahead and walk with the device and start our survey. Picking up the concrete pad that I have coming up here. I picked up that concrete pad too. Okay, we want to take your measurements. Manually take measurements. And this receptacle slides right in there. Locked into place, and you want to take it off. The button will release that clip. Locks into place. Ready to survey. Okay, it's nice and cute. 
six meter reading. 58.8 millisiemens per meter. Turn it on its side, on its uh, horizontal orientation. That's uh, gonna be a three meter reading. 54.9 millisiemens per meter. I'm gonna lift uh, it up. Five meter is uh, 47.1 millisiemens per meter. Go to the horizontal orientation to get a two meter reading, which is gonna be 33.9 millisiemens per meter. So we have a profile at six, five, three, and two. And I'm going to walk up and just show you a picture of the borehole that was created by the hand auger. Just to the uh, top left of the, the flag station queue. There's my water bottle for a frame of reference. It's gonna be a, a hand auger hole, probably uh, just under four, four inches in diameter. Okay, so we just finished the survey of 25 points in the uh, field behind the Spruce Grove, Grove campus. Uh, very important what we want to do. And I alluded to this at the beginning of the video is after the survey, we want to uh, remove the batteries I do not have a multimeter here in the field, but I'll do that when I get back to the shop. But again, I want to uh, unscrew this carriage so I can remove the, the battery compartments and uh, take out the batteries. So, very important that uh, we do so so the batteries uh, don't leak. It may be some time before I uh, continue on with the survey. Or we survey again. So again, we want to have a foam pad to collect, protect the back side of the circuit board. Set the batteries down. And again, when I get back to the shop, I will do a proper uh, voltage check. Although I have been using these batteries for quite some time. And uh, I could see that they were, sorry, I shouldn't use the screwdriver there. I could see that they were uh, degrading. So just uh, gently pop out all the batteries. of the battery compartment. Uh, it'll only go in one way because there's a key on the outside of the, uh, the compartment housing. So it meets along this track. Again, gently return it to its travel position. And we will just engage. 